Good evening, YouTube. This is the Three Middle Age Guys, and I'm Ray Mouse One, your host for this particular video. And I am joined with the theme here and the Reverend. This video is very interesting because we actually got a request for us to do this. Um, this the topic of this video is 80s and 90s cartoons. So without monopolizing your guys' time, uh, the floor is yours. Go ahead. Okay, let me start off with a little history lesson here. Okay, um, now if it's not obvious by now, we are middle-aged guys. Uh, we have been on this earth upwards to four decades, and cartoons has changed quite a bit from the mid '70s, mid to late '70s, all the way up until now. In fact, I, I will say this right now, uh, very, very openly and very, very honestly, uh, modern cartoons suck a dick. <laughs> Yeah, majority of modern cartoons suck ass. They they really really do. Okay, <laughs> and a big reason for that was that uh, the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, in the 1990s, went ahead and enacted the Children's Television Act of 1990. Okay, uh, their thing was that okay, there was a bunch of things that they changed and they 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 regulated and they put down on. They said, look, if you're going to make children's programming it doesn't matter if it's something like mr rogers neighborhood or it's a cartoon or or anything else that there was going to be requirements because we want to go ahead and make sure that things are appropriate and safe and educational for kids okay one of the things that they that they they went ahead and they put put together was that there were what they called safe harbor hours okay legally if you were to be to go ahead and put together children's programming, it could not be on uh, public TV from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., all right? Which, the side effect of that was that Adult Swim being showed after 10 o'clock, that, uh, that popped up afterwards, okay? Mm -hmm. Because if it was something that was rated for kids um, and it was marketed for kids, it couldn't be on in those particular hours, okay? No. Mm -hmm. um, Likewise, they started rating things for kids. You had, they started seeing fucking ratings show up on TV. Yeah. That wasn't, that wasn't the, the case. Um, you know, the, the other thing that was really, really annoying was that they started saying that if you're going to go ahead and make children's uh, cartoons or market things towards kids, there's got to be a very defined percentage of the actual onboard broadcast that that has to be educational. Now, some shows were good about that and dealt with that in very creative ways. Other shows turned into fucking Dora the Explorer, all right? Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, the, a, lot of the, a lot of things that, that came out of current cartoons right now is a de direct result of that Federal Communications Commission fucking Children's Programming Act from 1990. Okay, so... Sorry, guys, but this is one you can't blame us. It was our parents who fucking did it. Look, as far as cartoons, I'm, I'm just going to start with the 80s, okay? Now, there are cartoons well beyond the 80s that were good that we'll, we'll still watch to this day. True. But, I mean, come on. As a child, as a boy growing up in the 80s, we had it all. Cartoons toys tv shows fucking we could go outside and play video games but cartoons was a cornerstone if you w did not watch certain cartoons you were getting made fun of on the fucking <laughs> schoolyard a certain yep. extent transformers is gonna always the original transformers is always gonna hold a place in my heart if you said that gobots was better than transformers we're making fun of you it's just as simple as that. Fuck no. It, it did come first. Doesn't matter. <laughs> no. Yeah, the, the egg came before the omelet. It's between but, Mattel and Hasbro, but yeah, you know, you just know say. What? The egg came before the omelet. But fuck you. I'd rather have a fucking omelet than just an egg. Okay. Transformers. Oh. Uh, I wish they would have finished the Pirates of Dark Water. The, uh, look, if, if Netflix could pick that shit up 
and do what they did with fucking Voltron or just finish the Pirates of Dark Water. Just please do that. Please do that. Uh, as far as educational shit, you had lessons at the end of certain cartoons. Transformers had it. G.I. Joe had it. Even He-Man had it. Thundercats even had it to a certain extent. Well, you know, one of the one of the reasons why so many television stations started dropping fucking cartoons all together in the mid to late 90s was that one of the commissions, the FCC commission's uh, standards that they went ahead and they did was in 1996. They called it the 1996 mandate. Okay. And what it was was that if you were going to be showing any sort of children's programming on your TV, on broadcast TV, that it, you had to show a minimum of three hours every fucking week. That's ridiculous. Yeah. So not only not only did you have, uh, you know, showmakers struggling with just good content in general, but they had to shoehorn in all this other stuff. Where a lot of the best, uh, a lot of the best cartoons that we've seen, even the ones where they hit each other over the fucking head with frying pans. <laughs> They had their educational portions. They were put in, and it was organic. It was part of what was going on. Look, I, I, look. I'm gonna just start. Let's just start naming cartoons out there. Well, hang on. Before you do that, I like to say, you know, even before the '80s cartoons, you had uh, Hanna Barbera. You know, you had all these cartoons, Tom and Jerry, Popeye, and, and back in the '80s, Popeye is all the way in the '30s. I know. Yeah. <laughs> House, all the, but um, back in the in the eighties, Disney Channel was actually a good thing to watch. You actually watched the real Chippendales and the real Donald Ducks and the real, you know, they actually had the, the old school cartoons. And it's just that how much cartoons have and the FCC had so much influence over what children were able to consume. You see, the funniest thing about certain cartoons, I'm glad that you mentioned, like, the old Donald Ducks and Chip and Dales and stuff like that, and Tom and Jerry's. Some of those were shown in movie theaters before movie productions. Correct. Yep. So yep. when they started bringing them towards home, you know, they were all in bundles by that time. Well, when they were being shown on, in the movie theater, those cartoons were mostly adult content. I mean, especially like like you said, you have you have uh, you know that damn mouse hitting Tom over the head with all minute. kinds of what stuff. What about what about someone like Yo Seventy Sam? Yeah, exactly. Rugger, frugger, rugger, sugar, <laughs> you carrot eating varmint. He was borderline to him. Donald Duck were borderline cursing. Yeah, oh. and, it, it just, it, and with and with. Look, you had a sailor that eats spinach and that whooped ass at the end of the fucking cartoon. Who didn't eat spinach because of this guy? They weren't, we weren't smoking because he had a fucking pipe, but we were sure eating some fucking spinach. I know I was. So I'll be honest about that. I mean, it's just really weird we that... We weren't eating it raw out of a can, but we were eating some fucking spinach. It's just, it's just really weird that the FCC, you know, caused this. I mean, for some reason... You know, like you said, in the 80s and the 90s. So you're telling me that cartoons have been, you know, on the air since the movie theaters. I mean, uh, we're talking about in the 30s. Uh, you know, and all of a sudden in the 80s, oh, this is not acceptable for... Or, uh, or cartoons are too violent. It's like, wait the fuck the minute. <laughs> yeah. Well, that really kind of falls in line. Remember what we're talking about. And I'm not, I'm trying not to open up an old wound. But remember when we're talking about... Um, the second part of gaming while middle age, you know, that there was a, this huge drive about, Oh, this is what's causing the ill will of youth. This is what's yeah, causing the ill will of youth. Yeah. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, is that, um, and I, I can speak from personal experience, you know, a lot of our parents were on fucking drugs. <laughs> uh, and they, they weren't at fucking home being parents. Uh, I, I remember being a latchkey kid, <laughs> you know, and you're sitting there, you're, you 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 take a human being, okay, and you completely remove yourself from being a supervisor and a fucking parent to them, okay. You let them go off on their own with other human beings, young human beings who have no fucking supervision, 
All right. You think they're going to get into any fucking trouble? Nah, they're just kids. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah. Until you're getting fucking called by the cops for, because they're setting shit on fire. Yeah. You know, and that's on the low end of the, the, the fucking, you know, you know, nondescript fucking end of things. It's just, it, it's just one of those things where it's like, fuck, come on, think about it. Like, again, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, Open up old wounds or, or, or derail the, the, the thing because, okay, the one thing that, that like I said, the, the earmark of every geek is that the things that you loved as a kid, you continued to love as an adult. You okay? said that before. I have no shame saying that I watch animated shows. I watch cartoons. I watch anime. You know, I watch cartoons from around the fucking world. Okay, it doesn't even matter if it's in English as long as it has subtitles. I will watch if it's entertaining. Right. All right. But so there was a huge change from the '80s and '90s up until now because the majority of stuff that I see on TV, fuck that shit. It sucks. Okay. But what we're gonna do is that we're probably gonna talk about something that we like, and that's what I'm assuming, right, guys? Like I, and we don't like. Let's yeah. Point out uh, the garbage too. To start it off, I, there are certain cartoons that you, A, woke up early to watch before going to school, or B, you ran your ass home to see, <laughs> because you know it came home, you, you know, school let out 3 o'clock or whatever, mm -hmm. and you know your favorite cartoon was coming on at 3.30, so you ran your ass home, or, or whatever. And yep. um, some, of my, some of my most memorable cartoons um, in the mornings uh, had to be... Uh, um, like the Woody Woodpecker. I know those are old. <laughs> Walter Lance. But, I yes. mean, come on, Woody Woodpecker in the morning, man. That's one of those things that, we, oh, my God, I remember that. Woody Woodpecker, and then, uh, what was it? Um, uh, God, dude. For me, uh, Inspector Gadget was in the morning. Um, Gadget. Uh, what else was in the morning? dun 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 Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, so those are those are two of my favorite in the in the morning time. I have several others, but I want to give you guys some time to list yours out as well. Go ahead. Only heaven and earth colliding was gonna not make, let me watch Voltron. Okay, Voltron was the cartoon, the Lion Force Voltron, the vehicle mm -hmm. force I could skip, but the because. I look. I wasn't satisfied until he formed that blazing sword and he chopped something up. That's something that I was just so in love with with Voltron. I was like, form those lions, chopped up the robies, and I'll be on my way. Then there's fucking, of course, I named Transformers. I loved Mask. Mask was was a, and that was a um a spinoff of GI Joe. A lot of people don't know and understand that. Mask GI Joe. GI Joe was annoying to me because no one got hit. That's because the FCC. The no. FCC wouldn't allow that to happen. No. <laughs> Plus, no, you don't get hit. Motherfuckers will jump out with parachutes. <laughs> I'm like, come the fuck on. What about uh, and? But still, these are lasers. These weren't bullets. <laughs> Yeah. It's yeah. amazing how they get out of the helicopter fast enough. For oh, the yeah. Well, laser hits, and they just come out. Yeah. They don't end up in the rotors of the helicopter no. or, yeah. down or anything like that. They just shoot to safety. Yep. Okay. Road Runner and Wild E. Coyote. I didn't – when I started growing up, I actually sat there and I started thinking about it because I was like, wait a second here. When, it, when the cartoon progresses – I'm like, wait a second. It's not about eating this bird anymore. It's personal. He just wants to stop the bird now. <laughs> not even because stop. The shit that he was coming up with, I'm like, oh, wow. He, he wants to kill this bird. It's not even about catching it or eating it anymore. He's like, I just want to fucking stop it. I don't care what lengths I have to go. You drop 10,000 pounds on this bird, you're not going to be able to lift the 10,000 pounds in order to get it. No, you just want him stopped at that fucking point. <laughs> Fuck that bird. <laughs> Think about it. Tweety has been in Sylvester's stomach. So has Jerry. Jerry has been caught by Tom. But, but fucking hardly anything has happened at, to that fucking roadrunner. He's been caught once. 
And when he <laughs> did catch the road runner, it was under fucked up circumstances. <laughs> but I mean, damn it. Action cartoons. And then there were just cartoons that were just fun to watch. Like Animaniacs. Animaniacs is still fun to watch to this day. Tiny Toons is still fun to watch to this day. Thundercats. You know what's oh, yeah. funny about you know what's funny about Animaniacs and Tiny Toons is that you know when the FCC was all, was doing their bullshit and everything, those are two of two very rare examples that went ahead and they were like, "Hey, look, we're already doing the educational shit." Exactly. You know, and people are fucking entertained, not just kids but also adults. I mean, how many people can still sit there and re- have remember, you know, fucking singing out all the states of the country for yeah, all the yeah. countries of the, of the world. You know? And that was the thing about it. That was on a second freaking episode of the show. Yeah. That was yeah. episode number two when Yako did that. And it's like, wow, um, who put this together? And that can't be copied again. Yep. It, it just can't. It, no, Wait, Dora, Dora is not going to do that. Well, I mean, uh, one thing too is we forgot is um, I, I enjoyed the Disney the Disney afternoon. That's what it used to be called. Uh, we had Chippendale Rescue Rangers, and then we had Woohoo Ducktales. And I still don't understand as a kid that Scrooge McDuck can actually jump into his gold <laughs> and win it. And he was the only one who could do that too. He was the only one that could do that. Huey, 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 and Louie would try, and they would yeah, let him the go, and they say, "How does he do that?" Yeah, he took. Yeah, he, he took it out of my mouth. And, and even Family Guy has actually even, <laughs> you know, did a a a, 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 a nod. Griffin yeah. tried to do it. Yeah, I mean, then you got you got things like off, like uh, Tailspin. A lot of people didn't like Tailspin. Um, the Gummy That's because Bears. they put Jungle Book characters and they modernized them. Correct. As fucking you got, pilots. You got the um, <laughs> you got the gummy bears that drank some juice and could jump around all over the place. Drunk melted jelly. Fuck that. And then you got these uh, classic cartoons, Heathcliff and the Cadillac Cats. And I mean, the come Cadillac on. Cats. Come on, the Cadillac Cats. Yes. <laughs> And his, co- his cousin Riff Raff, the only thing they never met on screen unless it was at the ending credits of the show. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's it's just amazing. I mean, eighties and the nineties were the were the place to be. Oh, and speaking of nineties, Batman the animated series. Oh Lord, if you weren't oh, watching no. that, you would you best have a good excuse if you didn't see Batman the animated series. Don't forget about Gargoyles. That awesome. was one of the first cartoons, or the actual first, that went prime time. Yep. It, when Actually, when it, when it first debuted was Sunday night at prime yes. time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the funny thing about that is, and this will actually uh, I maybe serve as a point where I can sit there and rewind a little bit, it was that Batman the Animated Series, the pedigree of the folks who were working on that they started out doing Tiny Toons and, yep. and the Animaniacs. Because what happened was that Steven Spielberg, uh, when he had finished producing Who Framed Roger Rabbit, he was really, really hardcore on pushing forward to doing some sort of animated project. Who Framed Roger Rabbit was uh, a Warner Brothers production and everything else, and it was also... Warner Brothers and Disney. Yeah, it was a co-production between Warner Brothers and Disney. One of the... Probably one of the few times you're ever going to see that ever. It's never going to fucking happen again. Mm -hmm. It is never going to fucking happen again. Okay? Just to put that in in reference. Um, But Steven Spielberg, he went ahead after he, he produced that. He was really high on doing animation. So what he wanted to do, he was like, okay, well, what do we have there that we can go ahead and do? Since he was working with Warner Brothers, they were like, well, we always have Looney Tunes. And he was like, you know what? The Looney Tunes have already been around for almost 50 fucking years. Let's go ahead and see if we could change it a little bit. And that's where uh, Tiny Tunes came out of. Uh, a few years later, you know, 
Spielberg yeah. was really, really big on inside jokes within the Hollywood industry. <laughs> That's what it was. Animaniacs. What Animaniacs came out with. But the funny thing about that is that the pedigree for those particular people who were working on it, folks like Bruce Tim and Paul Dini and other guys like Eric Radomski and um, other, other guys who were working on those particular projects, goes back even farther because Paul Dini, the guy who was um, – the main writer for uh, one of the main writers for, for, for Batman, the animated series. He also wrote for, for Animaniacs. He wrote for Tiny Toons. He wrote for fucking He-Man. He wrote for fucking Fat Albert. I mean, this guy had been in the industry for a long, long time, you know? And the funny thing about it is that, you know, when they talk about educational programming and everything for kids, one of the first things that I think of besides Mr. Rogers, Fat Albert was great when it came to that. And the funny thing about that is that a lot of the writings and even the voices were done by old Jewish men. <laughs> <laughs> Fat um, Albert and the Cosby kids. Yep. 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 What about, uh, what about Darkwing Duck? Oh, Darkwing Duck is great. I mean, actually uh, the second spinoff, the second uh, spinoff of DuckTales, yeah. Of DuckTales. Yep, yep, yeah. I mean, even, I'll even say this, even Care Bears, man. I mean, they had cartoons for everybody. They had cartoons, they had Rainbow yeah. Bright, they had My Little Pony, yeah. they had Care Bears. Yeah. You know, they had cartoons for girls, they had cartoons for boys, they had cartoons for everybody. I hate, hey. I hated the Smurfs. I couldn't. I wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait. I understand it's not for everybody, but I just couldn't stomach blue creatures living in fungus. I couldn't stomach that, especially if there's a hundred of them. You mean to tell me that there's going to be a hundred different mushroom houses and one old wizard couldn't find these motherfuckers? And there's 99 males and only one female. The one female was created by the fucking wizard. Yep, Gargamel. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay, let's, uh, what about the Snorks? Okay, Underwater Smurfs. Yeah. That's what Richie Rich, Rich was, and they had a female species there. What Hated about Richie Rich? Rich? Hated Richie Rich. Fuck that guy. <laughs> One thing we forgot was He-Man, She-Ra. No, I, no I, I mentioned I, I mentioned He Man. Okay. Yeah. He, he and then, the great. Soul no. soul. Here's one right here. Wait. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You talk about a cartoon that totally gripped. It was that. It, it was the Ninja Turtles, the cartoon that totally just gripped. Even video games went to certain cartoons like the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Yeah, well, you know the the funny about the funny thing about TMNT is that it started out really it was Eastman and Laird pretty much they were doing like a kind of a parody and they were um, they were making commentary of of shit that they had seen overseas as far as uh, what they were putting together and uh, you know that grew into its into its own entity. The funny thing about that was that their particular concept and everything else would be mirrored of you know. A decade later, over a decade later, with the Powerpuff Girls. Because the Powerpuff Girls were pretty much a parody of the Super Sentai or Maho Shoujo anime and manga that was out there. You know, uh, freaking, uh, what was it? Um, uh, something were cracking. He was, he was putting it together. And um, the other producer of, uh, of Samurai Jack, Gendy uh, uh, Todorovsky or something yeah. like that. Yeah, and they they put that out of a lot of the more recent cartoons. Because the thing is, is when I think about uh, cartoons that I, I really, really love, I mean, I go back as far as, um, uh, what's that, uh, G-Force or Battle of the Planets. Battle of the Planets, yes. Actually, 1978, 1979. Wasn't G-Force Gotcha Man? Yeah, yes. that's Gotcha Man. Uh, that is some good know. shit. That's some yeah. good Japanese animation right there. Dude. But if you think about it, you know, Gotcha Man, when it was first shown in Japan, was shown back in like 1976. Yeah. Yep. It was barely fucking born Yep. When it, when it happened. And when it came to, came to here, uh, you know, under Sandy Frank oh Productions, uh, when I remember watching it, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, 
Penny Frank Productions and everything went ahead and they changed a lot of the stuff. In fact, Seven Zark Seven he wasn't anywhere attached to actual Gotchaman. He was just inserted in to fill in time for shit that they edited out of the Japanese version. You know what? If you want, just just watch the the Japanese version of Gotcha Man, then you're you're set. Please do. Yeah. Um, oh, one thing too is I like to mention is the real Ghostbusters. I'm talking about the real Ghostbusters. That cartoon, yes. Well, what um, what a um, lot of people don't realize is that there was a show back in the sixties or seventies called the Ghostbuster. The, Ghost- the yeah. Ghostbuster. All so right. That's why they had to um, call it the real Ghostbusters. Yep. In yep. the eighties, when they actually modeled the Ghostbusters after the movie that came out, yeah. Um, I wow, I love Silverhawks. Have to oh, mention yeah. that because I probably won't get smacked for this one. What about uh, maybe Reverend will like this one? Um, Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons was a fucking favorite of mine. Dungeons oh, and Dragons. They actually had a cartoon. Even Pac Man had a cartoon. What about yeah. the cartoon? What about the actual cartoon of Dragon's Lair? Yes. The, the, the problem with a lot of, of, the, of the really early 80s cartoons, the reason why we can sit there and rattle off so many fucking titles is that with cartoons, multiple times, uh, producers will go out of their way and they do an initial order and it's only of 13. Okay, 13 episodes, which they, which they go ahead and they, they show off if it's a weekly show over 13 weeks. But a lot of times with children's programming, they'll do it on the daily thing. Like... Um, for instance, a, a really old one uh, from like the early 1980s was there was a cartoon based off of, off of I Dream of Genie from Hanna yeah. Barbera. Yes, there what? was. Yeah. Yes, there was. I, I, didn't, I, I'm a, I'm, I was unaware of that. Yeah. In yes, fact, uh, Mark Hamill went ahead and he sang the intro song for that. Yep. Okay. Wow. okay. Um, but, now, uh, now, I have to, now I have to see it. I have to see. I know. Here's, a, here's the thing. They only ran, it was the highest rated highest rated cartoon of its season but they only ordered up like 13 episodes when they were saying hey look let's go ahead and let's do let's do season two all they did was they ran the same fucking season over for like two other two more fucking seasons before they they took it off the air oh yeah Um, okay even gilligan's island had a cartoon a lot of people a lot of people didn't even know that Rubik's the Amazing Cube was a cartoon. Oh, no. Rubik's, yes. One cartoon that we forgot from the 90s, I mean, it was Dexter's Laboratory. Dexter's That's Laboratory. another afternoon. Okay, well, wait. Dexter's we should, we should separate, Laboratory. yeah, we should separate the Cartoon Network cartoons that started coming off yeah. the late well, 90s. I mean, so all those 80s and 90s cartoons that we, afternoon cartoons. Because the thing is, is that after after the mandate of 1996, mm. that's really when Cartoon Network really shot into the fucking yeah. stratosphere because they were like, hey, look, since we're not reg- part of regular broadcast TV, we're part of cable TV, we can go ahead and show whatever we want as far as yeah. a- in it entertainment, and we don't have to adhere to that bullshit that you, ha- that you see on the regular channels from 2 to 13. See, even something like the Flintstones, that was the first cartoon, as far as I knew, that actually st- structured like a real show. Because it even had Wilma pregnant there. It was based off the Honeymooners. It yes, sure it was. was. Yeah, that's, they, were, they were parodying the, the Honeymooners pretty much. I, I, I mean, I was like, okay, fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this cartoon, no relation to the Grey Mouse, but Danger Mouse. I, oh, come on, God. man. Danger Mouse. Danger Mouse. Come on, dude. <laughs> the theme song, the thing, the theme song, the theme song, the Danger Mouse, is what actually got me hooked on the show. That and Count Duckula. Count Duckula. It's Count Duckula. A lot of people don't know that Count Duckula was a spawn of Danger Mouse. Yep. Was, Count Duckula was actually a character of Danger Mouse. <laughs> And then got spawned into his own show. I was I was more of a Duck Dodgers fan myself. <laughs> Duck, Dodgers. Duck Dodgers. That was a great cartoon. <laughs> the interesting thing about it is they had two episodes of Duck Dodgers himself, and then they spawned to an actual cartoon. Yep. yep. Wow. I mean, let's. Look, uh, we've named our favorite cartoons and whatnot. Let's uh, 
let's talk about the influence that it had on kids and us growing up up until and have that in direct contrast to what these new kids are growing up with these so, new kids are growing up with garbage that's what they're growing up with for the most part just as the reverend said earlier i mean okay I mean, don't, don't wait, wait wait don't get me wrong we grew up with certain things that are garbage i mean mc hammer had a cartoon called hammer man yeah mr t had a fucking cartoon mr t had a cartoon even Hulk Hogan's rock and wrestling was a fucking cartoon. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we, yeah, come on. Garbage <laughs> programming, we're not exempt from it. That's what we're saying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because you, I mean, look, I'm sorry. Hate it, Johnny Quest. I, I nope. I, I can't stand Johnny Quest. That theme song was badass, so. Uh, look, that was the point. It, it was like the shack full of cartoons. It started off badass, and then it was just boring as fuck. I'm like, man, I, I, I tune in for the theme song and the theme song only, and then I just changed the channel after that. Well, oh. let's go back to the to Grey Mouse's um, uh, question, though. All right. The one thing that – okay, let me give you a prime example of why I think cartoons are shit now. And this, this cartoon has been on for almost a fucking decade, all right? Caillou. Oh, no. No. Uh, this, this little cancer patient is the bane of fucking existence, I swear. Because the thing is that this little kid, he sits there and he spends, oh. out of the 22-minute, you know, aired part of the episode, he spends 20 fucking minutes whining and complaining and throwing fucking fits until his ambiguous fucking parents who are completely absentee sit there and say oh it's okay and then all of a sudden everything's fucking okay and the fucking credits roll it's like bitch no things don't fucking work out that way god damn you wonder why i can accept, I can accept that from curious george because he's a fucking monkey yeah exactly but i can't accept that from god no Fucking stab me in the eye again. You know, I've got a pen ready. Just fucking here stab I, me in the eye. Here I come to save the day. Dude. Mighty Mouse. Fucking love Mighty Mouse. Yes. Damn it. <laughs> Super Chicken. Fucking love Super, Super Chicken. Chicken. Tom Slick. George of the Hong Jungle. Hong Kong Fooey. Hong Kong Fooey. Yes. <laughs> Space Ghost. Coast to Coast. Space Ghost. Well, the original Space Ghost. Turbo yeah. team. Damn it. <laughs> you get hot, you change into car. What kind of concept is that? And it's really, really disturbing if you watch the animation now. It's like, wow, what? his ass turns into a fucking chrome bumper. And everybody's going to jump into. <laughs> if, if you're watching this video and you don't know about some of these cartoons that we name it, Look them up. They're they're very interesting. Oh. But some of this, some of them worked. I'm yep, telling you, yeah. Rubik's Cube had a cartoon. And he was a magical Rubik's Cube until he got scrambled and the kids had to unscramble him. We made. talked about we talked about the Flintstones. They actually had the Flintstone kids. Yes, they did. Tom and Jerry kids, the Flintstone kids, a pup named yep. Scooby-Doo. Yep. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Hanna Barbera put out a lot of them and then oh, they also Hanna Barbera ruled. They also they also they're also the the ones that you can thank for um what they call uh one sixes, which is the animation where they only animated like every six fucking frames instead of uh twenty four altogether. Yeah, where, yeah. the group of ghoulies were notorious for that. Yeah, no, all of them were notorious. Yeah. Like, if anybody was chasing somebody, they would be passing, like, the same thing in the background, like, seven fucking times <laughs> before they got caught, you know? Uh, I mean, okay, yeah. when you talk about Hanna-Barbera, you got to mention Yogi Bear. you got to mention Snagglepuss. you got to mention Quick Draw McGraw, El Kabong. You have to mention... There are no black people. Okay, fine. Galaxy <laughs> The Galaxy Goof Ups, Laugh Olympics. There are no black people. Okay, fine. <laughs> the Jetsons. Blue, Blue Falcon. There are no black people. Yeah, uh, Blue Falcon and Dino Mutt. In the past, there are no black people. In the fantasy world, there are no black people. In the future, there. Uh, 
You're about jabber jaw. I mean, you got a fucking shark playing the drums. Jabber jaw. Underwater, there's no black people. No, no. Jabber jaw, man. Oh, and I hate that, what's that fucking, uh, what's that cartoon with the buggy? That, yeah, speed buggy. Speed buggy. <laughs> In cars, there are no black people. <laughs> oh, my God. Although they, they they let a darker skinned person on, on in Josie and the Pussycats. <laughs> no, not Josie and the Pussycats. Jim, we forgot about Jim. That was the real Jim. That has substance to it. The real Jim, the one that Jim and the holograms. <laughs> That's basically this sh- what Hannah Montana copied. <laughs> That's just horrible. That is so horrible. Exactly. It's horrible, but fuck. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, not to, not, not to go ahead and take this away from, from, from Grey Mouse because he's the one who brought it up. You know, the thing about this is that the reason why we're able to go off is that, you know, like a lot of things, like video games, there are a lot of car- cartoons out there. And we've been on this earth for almost 40 years, you know, for a lot of us. We've seen a lot of them come and go. And uh, on request, we were asked to talk about it. This is just a drop in the bucket, really. We got lots to go on if we really want to. There might be a part two to this one. There's going to be a part two to this one. Yeah. But for this particular video, we're going to go ahead and end it right now. We are the middle-aged guys. I am the Reverend. The theme here. Grand Mouse 1. Old cartoons, new cartoons. Better than the shit that's out now. Credits. At least black people exist now in cartoons. (laughs) But they exist in this retarded shit. Hey, Jerry was black. He did that that one episode, man.